Um, Clipsy asks, is there any AI that can tune from black box info? I actually addressed that recently on the Joshua Bardwell Livestream Clips channel. Uh, that's where Blunty clips out uh, segments from the live stream and uploads them for you to enjoy. And I've recently... Let's just search. Can chat GPT tune your drone? No! It cannot! <laughs> well, if you want to go watch that clip to get the details, you can. It's on the Joshua Bardwell Livestream Clips channel. The short version is, I, I think the answer is no, because I am pretty sure that in order to do PID tuning, you, you have to be able to parse the black box data in ways that I don't think ChatGPT can. Specifically, in order to take the gyro data and convert it into a frequency plot, you have to do a fast Fourier transform, which is a mathematical function that does that thing. And ChatGPT can't do a fast Fourier transform. So when ChatGPT tells you to do something with your filters and then it works for you, I think it's just hallucinating and by chance it got the answer right. And I also don't think that ChatGPT has the ability to calculate like step response, like PID Toolbox does. So if you're handing ChatGPT a black box log, I don't think it knows how to parse a black box log. It's possible that if you give it a CSV data, it will be able to parse the CSV data and you can convert a black box log to CSV. But I still don't think it actually has the core logic that it needs to be able to interpret and make recommendations on the data. And people, it drives me crazy. And if I'm wrong about this, I will happily admit that I'm wrong. ChatGPT can do some cool shit, you know? But I just don't think it can parse black box data. Just to be clear, you're also, you know, people in chat maybe not, but you're using chat GPT as a blanket term for AI yes. and LLMs yeah. in general. Yeah, LLMs in general. Is there yeah. any LLM that can do a fast Fourier transform? Can any LLM well, I mean, AI any do of them could a fast... do it with code, right? Like if you're in cursor and you prompted one, like you could get a fast Fourier transform. You know what I mean? Like through code. Well, so if you have an you... LLM, if you had an LLM that could access a Python function that could do a fast Fourier transform, yes. Yeah. I mean, it would have to know that it needed to do that. Like you could but, go but, in cursor, prompt the AI to get you something that could tune a drone with the thing and explain. You know what I mean? That's the sort of the idea. Yeah, like, but and that's, then you would have to that's work not what they do. Right. That's not what they do. So here, for example, please write me a Python function to calculate FFT. Uh, a, a fast Fourier, a, a, um, an AI could do that. But what people are doing is they're... What they're doing is they're just saying, I dumped a black box log... Well, I can't find I can't find an example. They're just saying I dumped a black box log into ChatGPT, and then ChatGPT goes, "Cool, I will help you tune your black box log. We will get maximum step response and you know properly tune your filters." And it just says a bunch of bullshit. And then it's like, based on what I see in your black box log, I recommend that you increase your P gain. And it's like, you know what, like. I'll put on a white lab coat and a stethoscope and hold a clipboard and I'll say, "Cool, I've looked at your I've looked at your blood test results and it seems that your cholesterol is 132. I recommend that you get that number up. A good cholesterol is between 187 and 221. Don't I sound confident? I, I'm completely just I'm just talking talking out my ass. And I think that when when ChatGPT or any AI pretends to be like it knows that terms like P gain, D gain, filters, step response, overshoot, oscillation. It knows that these are terms that are associated with black box logging and it makes 
sentences that sound convincing and makes recommendations which you then follow and maybe they work, but it's not because it actually understood what was in your black box log. I don't think it can possibly know that. So. Yeah, and this also isn't to mean that somebody can't eventually train something to do this specifically. Like one of the yep. things we're seeing now is agentic. Somebody mentioned that in the chat, agentic AI, where mm -hmm. you have like one, I think that's how DeepSeek handled it. You have one big LLM model, but it's, it's, it's basically asking individual agents that are good at certain jobs. So yeah. it'll have an agent that's good at math. And so if it has math in its thing, it'll go ask the math agent to solve it for but, it and bring it back. So the idea is that you would have specific agents that understand these pieces, and it can't really get lost as easy because it yes. knows to ask the thing who doesn't have as much contact, like who doesn't have all, all valid. the contact. But, yeah. but here's the problem with that. It ha there has the training set, the training data has to include examples that let the large language model learn what right looks like. Does that make sense? Sure. Of course. Well, the, That's yeah. how LLMs work. And obviously a, a, a treatise on how LLMs work is not, I'm not qualified to give it. But the short version is that you feed the LLM a lot of data that is correct or that you, from which you want to draw inferences. And then you ask the LLM questions about the data, and it tells you and talks to you about the data. But garbage in, garbage out. D d did any LLM get trained on black box logs? Can it even parse a black box log? If I handed a black box log from Betaflight, it's just a bunch of ones and zeros. Does it know how to interpret that? How would it even know? And no, if it didn't. Building. Yeah, you build yeah. an interpreter like that. You would have to you, build it. I mean, that's you would have to do it, but no one's done yeah. that. Correct. My point is yeah. no one's done that. <clears throat> yeah. So you would have like to, number one, you would have to build an interpreter so that it could, in, it, basically you would have to build PID toolbox into chat GPT or give it an API that let it access PID toolbox so that it could look at the black box log and go, okay, your frequency response is X. Your, sorry. You know, your, your step response is why. Here are your current PIDs. And based on that, and then it's got to make a recommendation. So, again, you would have to train it on when P, is, P goes up, here's what happens. When P goes down, here's what happens. And here is what we're looking for. We're looking for this. This is our end state that we want. And no one's done that. No one's done that. I think the alternative would be, is there enough data out there if it combs all the forums and all the things and if it nope. can get transcripts of YouTube videos, like things like that, right? Like, is there yeah. enough data out there to tell you how to tune a drone? Or yeah. like you, you were saying, you need to specifically tune something. And then like you said, there's also in a black box interpreter, so you need the data out of it. So, uh, you know, that's something they're doing more, <clears throat> more of those. Like now they're image interpreters or uh, like the image creation has different ways of, like they're building, <clears throat> they're building mm -hmm. tooling in. Mm -hmm. So the tooling says like, hey, we need to be able to resize the image. So instead of the AI just like guessing at what resizing an image means, it knows right. the idea of resizing an image is this tool. So it goes yeah. and does the resize based on the function and then comes back and goes, okay, now what's next? That's sort of, yeah. that sort of thing. So I think yeah. that sort of thing could build an AI tuning in the future, but it certainly I, doesn't I, seem to exist now. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I, I absolutely think that it's possible to do it. Um, Y y the the problem is that you need a relatively large data set and you also it feels to me and again maybe this is a case where you know machine learning large language models they they can extract some pretty interesting insights from some pretty fuzzy data right but at the end like like there's the the I talked about this previously on the live stream there's an AI that analyzes radiology images and it could predict uh, cancerous tumors or something like, you know, weeks earlier than human radiologists could. And, and the human radiologists looked at the images and were like, how the hell could you tell that that little gray spot was going to be a tumor? We have no idea, right? But the key thing is that the AI was trained and, and they showed it a radiology image and they said, this one was tumorous. 
was cancerous. This one was not. They trained it with data, then they trained it what to look for, and then it was able to infer from there. So in order to get an AI that trained that that tuned black box logs, we would have to feed it black box logs and say this was a good one, this was a bad one, this was a good one, this was a bad one. That's the gist of it. You want an AI to recognize dogs in pictures. You say here are 5 million pictures that have dogs in them. Here are 5 million pictures that don't have dogs in them. And the AI goes, okay, I know what a dog looks like. No one has trained an AI to know what a black a good black box log looks like. I would, that would be great if they did. That would be awesome. So, and the problem, and I've talked about this way back when. Do you remember when there was that uh, drone mesh was doing that AI based PID controller, except it wasn't a PID controller, it was AI based? And the challenge is that, like, if I want to train an AI to, tell, to recognize pictures of dogs, there are millions and millions of pictures of dogs on the internet and all of them are like tagged with dog so i can easily just build this big data set of pictures that have dogs in them and train the ai on them and so forth but there isn't a giant database of black box logs with some of them tagged these are good and some of them tagged these are bad so the data set that you would need to train an ai to do beta flight pit tuning doesn't exist. And the way that they solve this in the real world is that they, they train the AI in a simulator. So they simulate the PID loop and they simulate the physics. And then the AI you know, messes with the PIDs and I don't know exactly how it works, but they basically just do all the training in simulation. And the problem with that is that the, then the AI is only as good as the simulation and the simulation, as we know, is not that good. Simulations of FPV drone physics are, are not that good. So, anyway. Uh, so, no. My stance as of today is that you cannot use ChatGPT to, train, to, to tune your PIDs. If you ask it to, it will say, yes, it can. And it will spit out an answer. And that answer may or may not be correct. It is pure chance. That's my take. 